Hello, and welcome to a bit of an improv, unexpected uh, show. I'm on my own this time. There's no one here with me, so it's just going to be talking me to you. Um, this week, and this month, really, I should say, the indie author community has been fighting a war. And this war is with one of the big companies in the... <laughs> Book World, Amazon, specifically Audible. So for those of you who have not uh, produced a book and promoted one with, um, with Audible or who are not familiar or just who want a recap of the situation, here goes. So first, let me talk through how an indie author produces a book and puts it up on um, Audible. There is a sister company to Audible called ACX. On ACX, and I'm in this process right now, you can post your book. Narrators can come to you with auditions and say, I would like to produce your book. This is how much I charge for it. So the rights holder finds someone and negotiates a rate. You can either pay up front per finished hour, anywhere in the range of $50 to $1,000 per finished hour. Um, you can do a royalty split so that you get 50% of the royalties and they get 50% of the royalties. Or you can do a royalty split plus, which is you split the royalties 50-50 plus you pay the uh, narrator some amount per finished hour. Once this happens, you sign a contract and production begins. There are many stages of production, which I'm not going to go into this right now, but in the end, you get a book. The book is then uploaded and then it's in Audible's hands. Audible has to go through a quality control for the technical quality of the uh, narration, which is done via computers, and it's called quality check. This is supposed to only take a few days, but lately it's been taking up to six weeks, 30 business days. Then the Audible staff has to go through and approve it for publication. This has been taking months. I know people who have been stuck in this waiting limbo since last January and their books are still not on the store. So let me repeat. The rights holder, aka the author, spends sometimes in the realm of, you know, three to eight thousand dollars to produce a book that then sits unable to be sold for months and months and months on end. This is a problem. But the story gets worse. For this great and fabulous service, Audible takes at minimum 60% of every book sale. That's right. If you are willing to sign an exclusive deal with Audible, you get a amazing 40% take home. But that's only if you paid your narrator up front. Remember that royalty split? Now you're only getting 20 and 20. But what happens if you're not exclusive to Audible? Well, then you only get 25% of every sale. Now, let me repeat. All they're doing is hosting and delivering the files. Now, that is an ex you know that is an expense, and it's right that they take a percentage for that, but they are taking between 60 and 75% on the table. But while those numbers are a bit unfair, and we will get into this. We all sign a contract and we all know what we're getting into. This isn't the problem. The problem is that Audible has started marketing a new and exciting feature for its members. Unlimited returns, easy returns for no reason. This means that any listener can buy credits. A credit costs about $11 and lets you buy a book no matter what the cost is. Cool, fine, that's what membership get, gets you. They can use their credit to buy a book. They can listen to it all the way through, return the book, get their credit back, and go on to buy another book with their credit. Now this, in other words, is called a lending library. And this is not what we signed up for. Our contract does not include terms of a lending library. When a user returns a book, the amount of royalties that were paid out to the author and narrator get deducted from their account. This could happen the same month the customer bought it, or a customer could have bought it nine months ago and then return it, and we still get, um, get it deducted from our account. And okay, fine, what's the problem here? Well, the problem wouldn't be here if people returned one or two books 
every once in a while say, you know, they got to the end and really hated it, or uh, the narration wasn't for them and they listened to an hour and said, no, I can't deal with this anymore. This person has a really squeaky voice or even, wow, this story really sucks. I don't really like this. Fine, returns. But the fact that there is no limit on um, how long, there's a year long limit. So you have to purchase the book within a year. And there is no limit to how much of the book you've read. So you can read the whole book and then return it. And right now they're promoting these easy returns. In fact, it has gotten so bad that when you try to delete a book off your phone to make room for another book, there's an option that says return book. That is very badly labeled. It sounds like you're just returning the book to your library, but no, that is actually an exchange. That is ripping the royalties out of the pockets of the people who, remind you, paid to produce it or actually produced it, who are already getting shafted by ridiculous royalty rates. And customers aren't even aware of this. They think that they're just doing what they're supposed to. They're not being told by Audible that this is happening. Audible is keeping their membership fees, what they get paid, and is using the smaller indie authors as basically this free source of revenue where they don't have to pay us because they're running a lending library, but they still get their profit and they make their customers very, very happy because for that $11 credit, suddenly you can buy book after book after book after book. We've been doing an experiment. Someone very bravely created a brand new account, got one free credit because you get a free credit when you start your Audible account and has to this day uh, I think over three days returned 19 books most of which they have listened to all the way through that is 19 books in a couple days audible has been guaranteeing us that returns uh, malicious returns and returns gaming the system are rare if ever and that there is a cap on how many you can return well there is a cap it's about eight or nine a month that you can return by just the click of a button. After that, you have to call customer service or chat with customer service. But as far as we can tell, there is pretty much no limit on how many books a customer can return if they're willing to game the system. And there are people willing to game the system and a lot of them aren't even doing it maliciously. They're not realizing what they're doing because Audible is not transparent. And now we get to the issue of transparency. There's the big one, and this is what has the community really up in arms. Because we didn't know this was happening. We didn't know this was happening because in the back end of Audible, all we get is our net, which means the sales we make minus the returns that get brought in. Then we get a number. We don't know how many returns that is. We don't know how many sales we've gotten. We don't know anything. We have no data. And this is absolutely unacceptable from a business perspective. In any other business, you get your sales data. You know how many units you sold. You know how many units were returned. This is how we can decide what's wrong and how to move on with our business. Say, for example, if we know that 50% of our books are being returned in the first hour, then we know there's a problem in that first hour. Maybe the narrator wasn't correct. Maybe there was a stumble. Maybe there's an audio glitch. Maybe the story just doesn't start out well. And I know for my next book that I need a stronger beginning. Maybe I need to change narrators. But what if all the returns happen if the book is all the way done? Then I know it's a problem with the system. But we can't tell because we don't have the data. And when we write to Audible and we ask for an audit of our work, they say, well, it's coming. Well, it's coming. Well, it's coming. Well, hundreds and hundreds, in fact, over a thousand indie authors have been writing in. And as far as I know, no one has received their data. Nothing. This is not the way to run a business. So... I don't want to make this long. I don't want to make this drawn out, but I do want to make a plea for all those of you who, like me, listen to audiobooks on a daily basis. I go to sleep to an audiobook every night. I have a library of over 400 titles. It is the way I enjoy literature and the way I experience books these days. I have very little time to sit down and read a book, but I love listening to them when I do the dishes, when I'm traveling, all of that. Please, please, please do not return books that you enjoyed. Feel no shame in returning a book that you really hated 
or that you're never going to listen to. That is your right as a consumer. But please do not game the system because a big, major, giant corporation is gaining from that. And little indie authors and narrators are losing out big time. If you want more books than you can afford, there are other ways to get them. Sign up with your local library. There are library audiobook catalogs that are amazing, and they do pay the authors fairly. There are a ton of other sources for audiobooks that are much cheaper than Audible sometimes. Or if you want to stick with Audible, do. Just, again, don't game the system. Don't let them get away with this because as long as customers are willing to do it and as long as that's what's making customers happy and customers stay then they're going to keep doing it they have all the power here and we have very little but also please if this enrages you if the thought of a giant corporation already taking a vast amount out of the hands of small businesses that already is not transparent in its dealings that does not give a fair share of royalties that has exclusivity contracts for 7 years and is just a mess and also keeps titles in production for months or ho- almost years longer than any of its competitors please consider writing to audible today the more voices they hear, especially from customers saying, this isn't fair. This is not how you treat the people creating your content, creating all of the material that we are enjoying. They will eventually listen, hopefully. We are doing our very best. Um, Most indie authors who I know with audiobooks are trying to move away from their exclusive contact tracks with Audible. We are trying to put our books on as many platforms as we can, spreading out the market. We're trying to deal with companies that are transparent and are, you know, trying, at least trying to be fair to us small producers. Um. And finally, please share this. Please share what they are doing so they can not get away with this. It is egregious that they are doing this all behind our backs, that they're not giving transparent data, and that they are basically just spinning their wheels while this continues. I know authors who are waking up with negative account balances after selling hundreds of books, and it is crushing. I am lucky. I am still in production of my first book, which means that I have the potential to launch it the way I want to launch it. I'm not going to be exclusive to Amazon. I'm going to have it everywhere that audiobooks are sold, and I'm going to be selling direct, and I'm going to do everything I can to get the book into as many readers' hands as possible at a fair price and in a way that I can be proud of. Um, But if you enjoy audiobooks, please spread the word. Please write Audible. And if you find out that, you know, friends and family are unwittingly doing this, please share this with them. Talk to them. If indie producers stop making audiobooks, it's going to be... A disaster for the audiobook world because it means that great books aren't going to be shared and aren't going to be made. And it just disincentivizes a whole group of creative minds from creating. It takes away jobs for narrators. There is no no upside to this long term other than money in Amazon's pocket. And so I beg you as an indie author, as a voice that tries to uplift indie authors, uh, please take heed. Please don't let them get away with this and have an absolutely wonderful night.